Hey everyone, it's Jenna. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna give you an updated bedroom tour because a lot has changed in here since the initial reveal video. And after spending about a year and a half in this space, I was able to find some really easy and budget-friendly ways to help elevate this room and make it feel and look a lot more designer. So I'm excited to share that with you all. And without further ado, let's get into the tour. All right, so the first major change in here that we made were the addition of these shelves. And if you remember, it was looking pretty bare and bleak in here before we just had a mirror on this side and a blanket ladder on the other and it was okay but I just wanted something to kind of fill the space and make it look a lot more intentional and permanent and I really wanted a built-in but this is a very spatially challenged room so you know I didn't want anything to make it feel too boxy and closed in because if you box off this space it kind of really limits the usable space and this is a great way of keeping it open with these shelves while still feeling very visually interesting and like it was an intentional design choice but it's still not bulky and blocky so these shelves were actually from Target and they were super affordable I believe they were like $150 when I bought them and I actually initially bought them for our entryway I only had one of them and I just wanted something to add some height and visual interest to our entryway area and I put it in there and it was just way too big it did not fit and you know sometimes with design even the top designers not everything works on the first try and you just have to play around with things and in a lot of cases it's just about trial and error and seeing what works and looks good and you know buying your stuff from somewhere that has a good return policy if it doesn't work in your space so I saw that it didn't work in the entryway area and I immediately thought of these little spaces that needed something extra and I was like the bedroom let's see if it works in there so I brought the bookshelf in here just to test it out and it looked so good it fit in here perfectly and I was like all right now we need to go buy another one because this wall just looks so great with some symmetry and it makes it look very intentional and symmetry is something that designers add to their spaces that really help round it out and make it feel finished. So I really wanted to do that with this wall, especially since we had it set up so perfectly for that with this dresser and the TV. So having something on both sides just really helps balance it out. And as far as the decor on the shelves go, I wanted to keep it really rustic and earthy. That has a very calming effect and that's what I wanted in our bedroom. So incorporating things in my shelf styling like clay or stone, paper, things that come from the earth really helps give it that very casual down-to-earth feel which I love. I also mixed in some sentimental pieces like this sculpture up here. My grandma actually made this in her ceramics class. I kind of try to mix things in that have sentimental value with you know some more affordable pieces that I find at Target and Marshalls and things like that. I also just wanted to touch on this dresser because I get a lot of questions about it and this was actually a DIY so I have a whole video on how we did this and this was the first piece of furniture that Mike and I ever bought for our place. We were back in Arizona. We had a one-bedroom apartment and I think we found this on offer up for like $60 and it was just a basic espresso stained dresser and we kind of transformed it to fit our aesthetic a little bit better with more of a lighter and airier vibe and you know it does kind of have an overall modern farmhouse theme to it or at least it did but when you combine it with all the other rustic elements in this room I feel like it plays off of those really well and helps add depth to the space and because it's primarily white it gives me some flexibility to play with other wood tones in my space. But yeah, I love this piece. And even though it is one of the cheapest and oldest things in this room, it's something that still really works in here and translates really well to the rest of the rustic decor. So, you know, I don't see the need to change it. And then as far as styling on the dresser goes, I just popped this cute little lamp from Target. It's super affordable and it's actually a dupe for the Serena and Lily beachside lamp, which is priced at almost $400. So it's crazy that you can get that same designer look for like literally a fraction of the price. So I love that it layers in that lighting here but it doesn't take up too much space and doesn't intrude on the TV. I also just like to pop my lamps a lot of times on a book because it helps give a little bit of visual interest and makes things feel a lot more intentional. And when you add things in a group of three, it's just a lot more visually pleasing to the eye and makes things look a bit more finished. So that's what we did here with this little plant. And then over here, I get so many questions about this antique stone riser and I actually found it at an antique store. It was one of those rare finds. I will try to link similar products below and and if 
everything in this video. If it is linkable, it will be linked in the description. So check that. Sometimes I try to find similar things for you guys on Etsy, but it is kind of hard sometimes when some of these objects are so unique, but there are lots of wooden ones that will give you the same effect. And then I just did a little chalk DIY on this really affordable vase that I got from Kohl's. I popped some olive stems in it that I got from Etsy for a great price. So yeah, just kind of mixing those expensive antique pieces with some more affordable pieces to really help give that elevated look to my space is what I like to do. So I do the same thing over here in my shelves. You know, this is a very expensive antique piece, but you know, this right here, that's from Hobby Lobby. These were from TJ Maxx and this bowl was a bit more of a splurge at an antique store. So yeah, I just like to mix things like that and not spend an entire fortune on the shelf styling, but still like to invest in quality pieces that I love to look at while, you know, accenting them with more affordable finds. And then this space over here is roughly about the same. I have the same pillows. These guys are just from Target, very affordable, but I love that kind of textured linen-y look that they have with this fringe on the end. I like that they're still very simple and understated, but still have a little bit of detail to them. The two front pillows I found at Marshall's, and then the bedding is from Brooklinen, and this is just a Pottery Barn throw that I got for Christmas many years ago. If you guys get this one, don't put it in the dryer. I always talk about this on my channel, but we kind of ruined it and burned it by putting it in the dryer, but I still sleep with it every single night. Mike gets the big comforter because I sleep a little bit hotter, so I just use this and it is so comfy. And then when I make the bed, it's so easy because I just throw this on top and it kind of adds some texture and visual interest, but it's still very usable and practical. So that's kind of the bedding situation. We still love our bed frame. Our bed frame is super affordable and it's actually a dupe for the mod bed frame from West Elm and it's like one third of the price. So I love that it has the little platform around it. So it's very convenient if you want to put snacks or books or whatever on the ledge. I love that it's upholstered. So, you know, you don't bang your head on anything and it still looks very designer and expensive, but it really wasn't. And then one little small addition that I did do was just adding this little marble dish here on our nightstand. And it's really nice because it just groups together all of the items that I actually use before bed or want on hand while sleeping, like chapstick, lotion, and then my pillow spray. And if you guys don't know about pillow spray, let me tell you, all you do before bed is you just spritz your pillow, and it just gives you that nice aromatherapy before bed. It's very calming. I just get mine at TJ Maxx. This one was $5. I still haven't took the price tag off, but you can get this anywhere on Amazon or whatever. I'll link some good ones below. This one's lavender and sage, and it just smells so good and is really great to incorporate into a bedtime routine. I love that this marble dish kind of helps give it some visual interest and makes my practical items more of a decor piece, which is really nice. This dish was very affordable. It's from Target. I love incorporating marble and stone details to a room. I think that really helps elevate it and makes it feel a lot more designer. So I'll have that dish linked below as well. And then these lamps are actually just from Rugs USA. They were very affordable for how large they are. And what I really like about them is that they anchor this wall and help create a statement because otherwise I feel like this wall would be lacking some contrast and visual interest and those really help anchor it with the size. So yeah, that's kind of the bed and nightstand situation, but I did add a really beautiful aged bench at the foot of the the bed so we can go over there and I'll show you guys that. So over here at the foot of the bed, we have this really pretty distressed Elmwood bench. And this is actually from a shop in Phoenix and I had it shipped to the house, which was a lot of money. It was probably one of the biggest splurges on a single piece of furniture in this entire home, but I absolutely love it. And this was another trial and error piece. This was actually originally in our entryway, which is what I bought it for because we just had a blank wall in there that I wanted to add a skinny bench on, but it just didn't match the scale of the room. It was very small compared to our long hallway and that hallway has very tall ceilings so it just looked really puny and tiny compared to the rest of the room and I ended up finding a much larger bench that fit that area a lot better so I just decided to bring this in here and use it at the foot of the bed to help warm the space up because this room is on the smaller side I wanted to keep the overall look of it very light and bright so you know light could bounce off the walls and it could give that optical illusion that it appears larger so in order to help warm a very light and bright space up. You need other things like black accents and wood tones to help it feel warm and cozy or else it just kind of feels blank and bleak. So I was really excited to move this in here to help warm up the space and especially contrast it against the white bedding. I think that it is such a beautiful look and it just really helps give that rustic vibe to this room. So another piece that really helps add warmth to the space is this natural fiber 
cute rug. And this thing is from Rugs USA. It's held up great and it's very affordable. And what I love about it is that it's made from a natural fiber. So when you build a space using natural materials like linen, wood, and jute, it really just helps give your space that down to earth organic feel, which overall never really goes out of style and is very calming and relaxing, which is great for a bedroom. And you know, it's not too patterned or crazy, but it still does help break up the space and provides a really nice textural base. So, you know, you can build off of that with these lighter linens and wood tones, and it just gives it that earthy organic feel. So for this side of the room, I just added some storage baskets in this corner to kind of help fill it out. And again, add some nice texture. These are actually dupes for the Serena and Lily La Jolla baskets, but I found them at Home Goods for like a fraction of the price. So that was a great find. And I just keep a lot of my camera and recording equipment in here so I can have it easily on hand. And it's just a great way to kind of store it by my workspace, all hidden away in these beautiful baskets. So that's really nice. I also added some faux wisteria to this vase. I think it just gives it a really fresh look and one thing that I like to do when using faux greenery is vary the colors a little bit so as you can see the olive tree over here is a little bit more of a dark jadey green and this one's a little bit more of a lighter limey yellowy green so that just really helps provide some depth to the faux greenery styling which I personally like to do so maybe that's something that you can implement in your space just add a little bit of variation with the greens I think that that looks really nice and intentional and lots of designers do this so I I got my YouTube play button, which is just so exciting. And I love looking at that every day. Thank you again to all of you wonderful people for that. I'm just so grateful. So that's gonna be a permanent decor piece from now on. And then I also just added this woven lamp to help add texture and warmth to this side of the room since it is very light and bright. This desk was actually a DIY. I got this desk for free and I gave it a total rustic look makeover and I have an entire video on it. So I will insert that here as well. It's so fun to just kind of take these pieces that would otherwise be discarded and make them fit into your space perfectly. So yeah, I love this space and how it's set up to be really relaxing. I love looking out to the backyard while I'm doing my work. And this is actually just a dining chair that I found at Home Goods, and I love the stripe detail on it and thought it gave it a little bit more of a coastal vibe in here. And when you mix styles like that, like rustic, farmhouse, and coastal, it really helps give your room depth versus just decorating the whole thing rustic or decorating the whole thing coastal. You know, it really helps give your space that designer look and feel. So that's definitely something that I tried to do in here with some coastal elements and some rustic elements as well. This olive tree was actually from the West Elm outlet. I got it for a steal and then I just elevated it. So it is kind of on the shorter side, but if you just get a large planter and then you stack some things in there and you elevate it, it really just helps make the piece look a lot more expensive and tall and grand. So that's what I did with that. And you can find some really cheap planters at like the Home Depot and Lowe's for great prices. So so if you have a faux tree that you just want to make look a little bit more grand, just consider elevating it a bit. And it's just a really easy fix to make something look a lot more expensive than it is. So the last thing I want to talk about and probably the most transformative thing that we did in this room was the addition of our wood beams. Before the tray ceiling was blank and bare and it just needed something to help warm it up and draw your eye up. So we ended up finding these faux beams at Lowe's and this is a little remnant of a piece so you guys can can kind of see the inside is hollow so they're very light and easy to work with but they do have these distressed grooves on them so it looks to be like a true authentically aged beam and authentic aged beams can be so expensive but these were very reasonably priced they aren't as cheap as making your own beam but they're still really good so I will link these below and they come with a little mounting piece so you just mount that onto the ceiling and we just attached ours into the studs so we knew that they were in there nice and good and and then all you have to do is put this on over it. They have some pre-drilled holes and then you just secure them that way and it was super easy to install. So the only drawback to them is that they only come in eight foot lengths. So if you have a longer area, you have to put two together. Unfortunately, our tray ceiling was like eight and a half feet. So we just had little pieces that were about this size. And all we did was just trim them down with our miter saw and then secured them up there right next to the eight foot beam. And to help them look a little bit more continuous. All we did was just filled the cracks with wood filler so it was all nice and smooth. And then I just mixed some brown paint with water and painted some faux wood grains on there to kind of give the optical illusion 
conclusion that it was all one continuous beam and that there was no difference in wood tone or wood grain. So that really helped kind of create that optical illusion, even though if you look closely, you can definitely tell that there is a little bit of a seam there, but if you're just glancing at them overall, you cannot really tell. And distressed wood beams are a very expensive architectural detail that are incorporated into lots of high-end designer spaces. So the fact that we were able to incorporate them in this space for a fraction of the price was insane. The ceiling before was just really blank and bare and lacking visual interest. And by adding these beams, it really helps draw your eye up, add architectural interest. It makes the room just look a lot more expensive and adds warmth to the space. All right, everyone, that about wraps up this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I post new home decor content every single week, so be sure that you're subscribed so you don't miss any more of that. And if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. It does really help to support my channel. I wanna thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all have a fabulous week and I will see you in my next video. Bye.